Greg and I were discussing this. We think there ought to be some kind of a term for when the cargo in the back of your truck is worth 40 times more than your truck. You know, we did discover a way to regulate the crane movement speed. We can bleed off pressure here. <laughs> that made the boat roll. More up. Okay. There you go. You got it. You want to put a rope on it? No, it's still short. Then you're not going to swing much. I got to edit video. You know, most of the time I think when somebody's learning something new, leave them alone. Well, wait until they ask questions. That is our second battery. Well, that looks great. Thank you. Welcome to my stash of lead. Well, the trucks are certainly squatting down in the back. That's what makes that magic happen. So we will just uh, move this magic to the boat. Yeah, I put a list on her. Well, what we did is we estimated the weight of these and how far back and offset they are for the mass. And that gives us our leverage on each side, you know, so we just calculate that out. We calculated 95 bars of lead will get the trim of the boat, the list, that's the side to side, straightened out. And we'll put it as far forward as we can to start bringing down the bow. So the math really isn't much rocket science. See, if you've got eight feet back here and five and a half feet out, you got 100 pounds. So that's 550 pounds of leverage this far back. I don't really care in this case how far back it is. I'm just trying to get the trim of the boat right as far as this list goes. So that number gets put over here and then you know you total up both sides and okay I got a lot more weight over here because we had the boat trimmed with using this stuff. And I want to exclude that. So I take that side off of it and I got that many foot pounds less. Uh, I divide that by uh, five feet out because that's where my load is going to go and I divide that down by uh, 18 pounds per bar. I need 95 bars. And it's not SpaceX. We're just getting into the ballpark because cargo changes on this boat all the time so we'll trim by where we put our cargo. Then the rest of the lead will go as far forward as we can get it. That'll bring the bow down the rest of the way. Once we got it kind of trimmed out then we start adding water and fuel and see how much we mess it up. What's a cubic foot of lead? Uh, cubic foot's about 600 pounds, pure lead. 32 bars in that one, about 60 in this one. Okay, so that's 1,700 pounds. So that should put us in trim. All right, here's the other thing. All my cylinders go right in there, so we're gonna pick a bunch of weight on this side from that, too. Okay, we're in the forward part of the forward cabin. That hatch right there is just below the forward mast. There's a bulkhead here that's steel, and then there's a plate welded across. We got 20 bars underneath it. Man, that is tight. Well, she's better, but she ain't there yet. We've got the trim taken care of as far as the, the list. In fact, we built it back the other direction by putting that lead in these uh, fuel tanks over here. We still have all those battens laying on this side of the boat. And, you know, we also took care of, you know, where things are in the cargo hold, moving some things around. So that is good, but it's the pitch that's still bad. See, we got 18 inches of paint showing there, which means we can push this down another, you know, 10, 11 inches. We put about 1,100 pounds up here just beside the mast and actually inside of the mast and then we threw all the other piece of chain in there now it was just laying up on the deck there so that didn't change too much but it didn't bring the rear up enough that's our problem spot we knew this would be a problem spot but it's more of a problem than i wanted it to be because if you look down there that piece of metal we need that to be about 10 inches out of the water and it's just underneath the surface of the water which means our tender our big heavy tender is not going to be at back here unless I move a lot of crap out of the engine room. The hydraulic accumulator, that's easy. The CNC machine, that's not easy. And maybe the 10K generator. <sighs> decisions, decisions. <laughs> okay, it's time to open up the through holes. There we go. No water coming in, that's good. Throw the bowls there. Oh, hey, look at that. Stick it over there, it should dry it out. Hallelujah. And look, he's not dead. There's Bart, wave Bart. Proof of life. Glad Bart could come out and feel the boat roll gently from side to side. Time to fill up with some water. Thanks to Clint for loaning me the tank. 
absolutely having everything up higher than the tanks just drain it into it and who says i don't care about water quality filtering there with a fairly clean rag do we get overboard that clean that out shut that off shut that off and start the washing machine wash machine is on the list of things that may move from the pilot house anything heavy might go forward so it's kind of depending on like you know how much and how much hassle is it to move it we want to see those go clear okay shower has been taking care of itself out here oh, lovely ah there it is yeah we just got to run some hot water now Ah, there it goes. Beautiful. Now we can go fill the water tank and make some hot water. Okay, we've got one of those problems we have to fix. The understead down here is connected to the drive shaft and it's with the gadget that changes the pitch of the blades. And it gets its oil from the power steering pump up there on the Cummins diesel. Same pump that used to steer the school bus. That oil comes back through here and then it gets sucked out of the sump down there and up through a filter. but. It's not priming itself. I poured oil in here and I primed it because this line used to be just ever so slightly downhill. And now it's uh, uphill. So I think it drained all out, lost its prime. So I'm gonna put a check valve here. So as tons of oil does not pour out of this, that tells me that it indeed has lost its prime. Well, it's done with water, correct? Yeah, that's not a lot of oil coming out. So that must be what's done, lost its prime. So the new arrangement is the filter here and then a check valve, a swing gate check valve. And then we'll put the oil in up here on this line. That'll fill it all the way to the pump up there. And after it's primed, it should draw the oil through this. That's the hope anyway. There it goes. And we're using the swing gate check valve because it doesn't take much uh, pressure to open that gate. So we don't want to make it harder for it to draw the fluid up. It's working from up here too. The handle just follows the propeller blades from one position to the other. Forward. That's a nice slow prop rotation. Insulation's getting hot and smoking back there. I think that's just a one-time thing. Fans will help. A little more throttle. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I think we have a motorboat. Okay, so throttle down, take it out of gear. Tomorrow we'll get the pumps running for coolant and run a three-hour test. And we'll make sure she doesn't lose her prime. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck. Had a little drip in here and took the hose off. Left it. Not a good idea. Did you check the forward toilet? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, good. Because this one is not. That's the problem. So we went to lunch. It drained in here, filled it up. We had that clamp off to work on it because of that little leak. That one right there. And so when the bilge pump kicked on, it pumped it into the loop and just right back into the boat. Yeah, but where, where's the river water coming from? From that valve down there. Which is shut. Ah, yeah. Was it shut? Yeah, hell yes. Yeah, it was shut because it wasn't pumping over. that hose or we would have sunk the boat. Huh. Okay, that's a good question. So that toilet uses river water. Yeah, yeah. It's that loop right there. Well, it's not sink water because the sink's dry. No, the toilet's filled. And it's definitely river water color. So how is the river water getting in? Truly the things I like on boats. It makes you think, but I can't think why this is doing that. It is just bizarre. So this big ass check valve is welded to the hull. Obviously the place to get water. Comes in, hits a T right here. And then this T, it goes over to the bottom end of our siphon loop. Siphon loop goes up, comes over, back down and pumps feed into it through this T. That's the pump inside of that sump. That picks up the sink and the shower pan. And this one, when it runs, is the macerator pump that empties out the sewage tank back here. That's the only place where water can come into the boat. 
and yet the toilet was overflowing. Now why the toilet was overflowing was easy. I had left it in the fill mode instead of the empty mode. Let me show you. So you put the lever in that position, pump it, and that empties it out. So that's where you'd normally end up with it. But it was actually sitting over on this side. And that is pump water into it. See the water coming in? Here's the deal. When I stop pumping, water keeps coming because it's siphoning it in from the river. But if you just move that over to empty position, finish your business, the empty position shuts off the water and that stops coming in. So that's simple enough. But if the ball valve is shut off to the outside, how is it getting the river water in here in the first place? So let's put it back the way it was and just wash it. Well, the first thing I know is it's hard to get this valve all the way closed without a wrench on it. So if it was open just a little bit and this was off, when the pump kicked in and I put the hose back onto it, I was forcing water into the toilet. True. Yeah, so that's why the toilet filled up so much. And then it being in the wrong position just made it, you know, keep overflowing. That's it. You gotta use a crescent wrench to shut these things off. This is what makes most boats sink in marinas. You know, a hose comes off or something starts leaking, a bilge pump battery runs dead, and uh, a sailboat goes down at the dock. The problem with that is people don't use their boats enough. You live on them, you come back from lunch, you find it. There we go. Yep, it's rising up. See that handle is just barely off the stop. So that's our problem. Yeah, what a beautiful sunset. So our boat jacks are ready to become rudder pistons. All right. And Hollis is back with us. Well, more lead. Part of it's for a stability test we're gonna do. Well, one more day to get ready to go down the river. Hollis here is replacing the coolant pump for the Hunterstead. And a water pump has failed. Gotta fix that. Eh, we don't need water. And we got the fuel pumps working though. Found a couple leaks, but easy to fix. And these pumps are the pumps that lift the fuel out of the tanks into the day tank. And we even put 55 gallons in here from a drum, so we actually know how much uh, in every inch will hold. And we discovered that you gotta prime these pumps, but the way we did it is we opened up the valve from the pumps and then ran the engine for a little bit. The return fuel from the engine goes up through that same pipe, so it backfed and primed the pumps. Learning something every day. Diesel. Okay. Nice and toasty in there. It's nice and toasty in my sleeping bag. So on the Volvo. Yeah, we need to hook it up to the main battery. Let's see, transfer. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. And we can turn the other one on too. Turn them in parallel. Fuel transfer pump. Yeah, so one of them it threw. So I got to change one breaker out. It's just something I stuffed in there. It's not the right oh, size. Right. Okay, neutral. Forward. I told Darwin, be adventurous, take some risks. This may have gone too far. When we put it in forward, it pushes water out the back. When we put it in reverse, it also pushes water out the back. So we think we have the shift lever there marked wrong for the blades. Because in forward, this drive shaft rotates counterclockwise. I know that sounds weird, but I have been out in my underwear in the middle of the night, having woken up from a dream, making sure we got this right. And it's just strange to me that it's pushing water backwards. So I think that's labeled wrong. I think we have our blades set like that right now. And that's why we're seeing water go crazy in both directions. I mean, that's the front of the boat. And I think we have a blade set like this right now. So no matter which way we turn it, we throw water everywhere. Because that's for sailing. That is for motoring. So we need to make sure. Okay, so that notch in the bottom there, that's what gets pushed. So that shaft down there goes backwards, we go to this. As it goes forward, it goes to that. So we need to make sure that I bet, I bet it's pushed all the way to the back right now. Let's pull up. Oh, yeah, that F isn't for forward, it's for feathered. I never touched that one. No, I said put an F on it for, and I'm thinking forward. We have them feathered right now. 
It's why gonna, would you feather it? For sailing. I know, but why would you have it right now and feather it? Well, it's a stupid mark. It's, I, F to me means, you know, forward. So No, can, can forward actually, is down here. Can you feathered is, fire the captain? Yes, I can fire his ass. Damn, damn thing. I'm the owner of the boat, not the captain. Oh, okay. We'll fire it up again. We'll, we'll move this and it will work. All right, we're not in gear. One of the nice things is we can look down there and see that label? That's on the drive shaft, so we know we're not in gear because it's not turning. You should be able to bring that lever back slowly. Not too much resistance. It'll give a little... Is it moving? Mm -hmm. It is? Yep. Yeah, see it slowly comes back. It's changing the pitch of the blades. Yeah. A little more RPM that will help. Actually it did. Yeah. Power steering pump had more pressure on it. Yeah. Right, all the way down. Excellent, okay. Off the throttle. And we put it in forward. Looking good. Yep. What? Yeah, we're going forward. Put it in reverse. <laughs> oh yeah, the lines are all tight. Hey, it's working. All right, neutral. Reverse. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're actually moving oh, in the right yeah. direction. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Sweet. Practice the the forward to reverse. Okay. So go ahead and put it in forward. Bring that just at idle first. Okay, that's forward there, right? Okay, and then neutral. Neutral. It takes just half a second to stop. So that's not bad. So go back to forward. Forward. And then go to reverse. That's all you need. Yeah, one, two, two counts, that's it. On Brandon, he has one tug he drives. It's like 10 seconds before you can go from forward to reverse because you gotta wait for everything to spin down before you can you know, put it in. We have an automatic transmission, so we could just slop it in. And we've actually done that accidentally in dry air. So, you know, the prop spinning has no resistance, so it, it did it. I mean, it's not a good thing to do it, but in water, we want to count one, two, as we shift from forward to reverse. And so we want to throttle down, shift, and then throttle back up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh my God, can we go eat lunch now? Because I'm stressed. I need some stress food. Oh, the cast propellers again. You know what that was? That was months of work. I was even going back through old videos, that's my manuals basically, to see, you know, how did this thing work? And yes, confidence building, we had it right. So we know the RPM of the engine in idle is 748 RPM. We're gonna check the RPM of the shaft to see what it's doing. That'll tell us how much slip there is in that transmission because everybody said it will lock up, it won't lock up, so we'll see what it does in idle and then later on at higher RPM. Eighty-eight. We have a lot of slip. So we've weighed out a thousand pounds of lead. Going to hook it onto the crane there, and we're going to see how much that heals the boat over to the side. That's a list, and do that with the weight out from the center line of the boat. That gives you your foot pounds that you're pulling on it. Those numbers can get plugged in and get us a uh, stability. Why don't you measure it at four degrees, then move it out some? Get your measurement first. 1,000 pounds, 132 inches out, gives us four degrees list. Now, not just side to side, but we're looking front to back, too. And you know, it only lifts just about maybe a half inch at most. Half an inch. She's got strain on the lines. 1500 RPM. I turn the blower on. One ought to be enough. Looks like it pushes down the river, doesn't it? Well, look at that, we got a waterfall. Okay, it looks like the transmission cooling pump isn't working. 
That'd be the heat exchanger for it. Ah, it threw its breaker. That's why. Let's see what that does for it. Yeah, that's dropping the temperature down. So we just got a breaker trip. That's good. No, it's dropping like a rock. So 122 on the hot side. 117 on the cold. Really? Sure enough. Was. Oh yeah, it's already down to 120. Get a bit of your breaker put in there. Hey, over three and a half hours of runtime today. We got the numbers and it's stabilized, so it's looking good. I mean, I like the transmission temperature cooler. We may have a lot of slip in that transmission, but the data about the reduction ratio on it could be wrong, so we've got a lot of things to look at, but we're going to go. What? What's interesting? like a rock. Yeah, I think we need a bigger, bigger pump, pump on that this transmission. Nothing changed on the skeg that fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, it's pretty much stable. We need a bigger pump. Bigger pump on the transmission. That gadget is the starter. Yeah, the solenoid is giving us problems. In fact, it locked itself on so it wouldn't turn off. So we hastily yanked all the cables off the batteries. Let's see if it does it again and be ready to disconnect, right? Ready? Okay, no problem with the motor. But we think the problem's in the solenoid. That's what I was doing last time, was I was jumping this little wire that comes down from you know the start button to the power which comes from the battery. So we're gonna have to kind of do that again. Maybe got salt water in there. Oh no, we haven't been to salt water yet. This thing throws the gear into the uh, flywheel when you hit the starter, and then when you undo the starter, it kicks it back out. It could have stuck those gears for some reason. I think we put it back in. If it works, that's fine. Tomorrow we get a new starter. You should have a spare. You should have a spare anyway. Well, I'm a sailboat, but as long as I'm on a thousand mile river, yeah, I think a spare is a good idea. Matthew is back with us. The CIA let him go for a day so he could get our battery installed. And it's a movie making day here on SV Seeker, so we got all the camera guys. Now you know she's not listing too bad. Watch, watch 55 gallons of diesel weigh. 400 pounds. Yeah, about seven gallon, pounds per gallon. Six pounds a gallon. Here is my hand. Here is my spot. I want you to look down the side of the boat so you can get an idea which way we're moving. Reverse. We're in the line, are we? All right, yep. Yeah. I'll slack that off. Reverse. Reverse. And give her a little throttle. He's up on throttle. That did not bring her into the wall. Neutral. Neutral. Yeah, so I think we back out all the way over to starboard. Yeah. Yeah, that worked well. Let's do it again. Yeah. So it's kind of like we're learning to drive a car nobody's ever driven before, and we're trying to figure out how to get back away from the dock. And it looks like it's going to be just turn the rudder out that way and slide out. Okay, that is a shoebox collecting water and a little bit of fuel now. Open it up a little wire over there, Hollis. We made the mistake of putting fuel into a tank that had apparently a lot of water in it, possibly from rain, undetermined as it yet. And that got into our engine and shut it down. So now we're going through everything and leading out the water. Build a boat, put an engine on it. It'll be fun. It settles out. I'll just let it settle a little bit and drain it again. So, oh, so they have the back weight on the Yeah, all right, here's what we they're talking about. We have two batteries now, and they've written some custom software so that they can tie them together. That was something we didn't think we'd be able to do. So now we have uh, 1,050 amp hours available to us. So if we can't get the engine to work, maybe we just hook up a motor to it. Well, it's gonna be hard to get lost. We just go downstream, right? She turns nicely. <laughs>